Mark is going to answer some questions about the power tank. Then, as we do a little prep work before our bus Palooza rally, we find we have a little problem with the bus. We have a lot going on in this video. Number of you that have asked how I air up the tires on this, yes, it does have an engine driven compressor but that only builds it up to about 125 and I have to put 115 in my front tires. So it's, it's hard to overcome that pressure that's in the tires already. So I use this power tank and it has a high pressure regulator on it. And you just run it up to where it says tire range, the big ones. And I'm gonna turn it on right now. It's up in the range where it needs to be for full and I'm up at the bottom of the tire range right here. So I'm going to turn the gauge up just a little bit here for you. And I'll show you. Now I'm just up in the middle of the tire range right here in the black. And what's neat about this hose I have, let me show you here. This black part of the hose, you can probably hear it, that when I pull back on this black, it bleeds off the pressure in the hose. And go, you'll hear it. It bleeds off the pressure but what i'm going to do first i'm going to turn off the valve on the tank turned it off and now i'm just going to let the air out of the hose and it's down and i can just pull it off good to go okay now i'm going to change the oil and fuel filter in the generator just for those who don't know on these these are a, a 20,000 watt generator it's a turbocharged four-cylinder Kubota engine and yeah you know, we try to keep it clean in here but they do a good job at running everything in coach they put it this one puts out hundred and sixty six amps of power so it can run the whole coach with no problem and I use high dollar tools here a piece of three-quarter inch PVC I unlock my generator, it's on a slide tray. And I mean, this is high dollar stuff here, these PVC. See, my generator will start sliding out because we're sloped this way. And I stick it down here in the slide bracket right there. Now it can't go anywhere. High dollar tool, PVC. Then I have my oil filter and fuel filter right here and drain plug right here so it's on this generator it's super super easy to change the oil and here's the air filter up here super easy and if you're wondering why i don't start it up and run it and warm it up it's already warmed up yeah it's still warm i had uh i came out earlier today and washed the bus It's pretty quick and pretty simple. And I always write on my fuel filters when I changed it last, or my oil filter here. They say to do the oil every 100 hours or once a year. The fuel filter, they say every 150 hours. I keep it simple. I just do it when I uh, do my oil filter. And uh, the air filter won't get dirty. I change it about every two years because it just doesn't get dirty in here and this air this generator is on airbags so when it's running in the coach you rarely you don't hear it really because and it takes out all the vibrations from the generator the oil was just ninety seven dollars and i've probably got forty or fifty dollars worth of filters here you know it adds up hundred hundred forty to fifty dollars a year in maintenance on this thing so you know not too bad but more than you than you would like to spend
I've written the date and the hours that are on the generator right now on the fuel filter and up on the air filter right there. I'm gonna prime it up right here. Now I'm gonna try to start it. And I didn't hold it long enough. And as you can tell, it's rocking because the airbags are not, the secondary compressor is not turned on. No leak, so we're good to go for another year. Hope anybody who has something kind of like this enjoyed it. The bus is setting down back here in the back. I've got the leans today, so I've either got a bad Norgren valve that's not letting air go to it, or up in the steer compartment way up here, I've got uh, what they call a five valve stack, and I've got solenoids up there, so one of the, either a solenoid's not putting air to that side or something. So I've got to take it over to Prevo, hopefully this week, and get it fixed, because we're supposed to leave on Thursday. But as you can see, it is leaning. I'm following Mark to take the bus to Prevo because when he w he moved it out to wash it yesterday and he discovered that it has the leans. Plus we looked at it and it just didn't look level. He thinks it's only a valve or a um, solenoid, but just to be safe, we're taking it to Prevo. He, did, he could air it up this morning and it looks pretty level, but there's still something wonky going on. So we're going to run it by Prevo because we have the rally coming up on Thursday. Okay, we are here and they look busy. This one looks like it has the leans too. It is time to wash this filthy bike, especially after I did that dirt trail in Pagosa Springs called Turkey Springs. Did I say that right? Yep, I said it right. My baby's clean. We are finally on the road headed to the Busapalooza in Brenham, Texas. That's that way. Yes, it's that way. That way. That way. Hopefully the weather will clear up. It's kind of drizzly and rainy. It's supposed to be like that off and on for a couple of days, but we've never been to the Busapalooza before. This is their fourth year and we're really looking forward to it. Gray just came on the uh, radio talking about the traffic. It is really bad. I don't know what's going on. Lots of trucks. What is today? Thursday? Thursday. So, don't know. Was telling us that there was a what did it say a ground wrist 
risk of grounding, meaning high center. Risk of grounding. And every time we looked at a road going to the left over the railroad track, yes, there was a good, what would you call it, an arch? Oh, yeah, we wouldn't have done it. We would have high centered, I'm sure of it. But we lucked out because this one road that we did take the left on went under the railroad track instead of over it. But we're a little surprised that the Garmin gave us those warnings even though those roads weren't on our route. So. We don't have high ground clearance. No, no, we're very low to the ground. What, what would you say? 12 inches? No. Texas after having to take the bus over to Preville Fort Worth which saved a bacon uh, I think I showed you in one of the little videos the bus was leaning and when you get the leans you get the leans but it's common for buses right pretty Hell, common I've heard about it for years well buses will get it but it's not once you fix them they stay up forever well, but, I guess I'm, what I'm saying is it's common to have air leaks. You'll have air leaks. Yeah. But what it turned out to be, it was the, uh, on the tag axle, the airbag had a hole in it. So it was leaking, and it was not leaking terribly bad. I mean, fast. You couldn't, with my hearing anymore, I don't hear things, but... Uh, they finally, they checked the solenoids, uh, they checked the uh, Norgren valves, they checked the relays, everything that works with this air system, and it was all working, and it turned out to be a leaking airbag. So they put a new airbag on it, we're not leaning, and here we are. So since we're down in Brenham, uh, stick with us, come back and visit us next week, and we will show you what all is going on with Busapalooza the fourth year in a row 4.0 and it's growing like wildfire it it is we'll talk about that too it, it, four years ago they only had like eight people six eight six, six people six buses six people and now it's in the 90s so it's in it that's crazy so anyway 
have the best day ever, and we will see you next week. Bye. Bye.